Well, we're going to shift uh, our attention now over to commodities. And you'll recall um, our derivation of the futures price was simply the spot price carried at the risk-free interest rate to some future point in time. I keep saying the word carry. You'll understand later on why I use the word carry, but uh, when I say that it's carried at the risk-free interest rate, that's the power term uh, of the E uh, um, variable without the T. So all non-income producing investment assets can be priced, uh, the futures price can be derived with this formulation. Commodities, however, need to be stored somewhere. They have physical presence. They have physical costs. You got to put them somewhere. For a lot of the financial assets that, uh, that uh, organizations, firms, funds, individuals, traders, speculators, hedgers trade, uh, there's no physical presence. A lot of times they're just bits and bytes in a network. They're just uh, an electronic uh, uh, recording that I have shares of stock or I don't have shares or I have an option on shares or I've got a futures contract on the index. It's just an electronic uh, uh, um, uh, presence. I don't actually have to receive anything and put it anywhere. But with commodities, however, um, whether they be investment commodities like gold, silver, platinum, or whether they be the consumption commodities that we're also very familiar with, uh, copper, uh, live hogs, uh, uh, live cattle, corn, wheat, uh, any of the metals, any of the agricultural products, anything like that, well, you got to put them somewhere. You can't just buy them and let them hold out in space. So let's, uh, let's uh, modify one formula that we already know. And you'll recall for, a, for an um, income-producing investment asset, we subtract from the spot price the net present value of all future income. Because if we're getting that, then that actually lowers, it will lower the futures price. So it would be the spot price minus the net present value of all the uh, future uh, cash flows carried, uh, the difference carried at the risk-free rate of interest for the period of time t. Well, if we introduce a new variable, let's call it u, and let u be the sum of all the storage costs minus the sum of all the income, because some uh, some assets do, uh, some commodities do produce income. Uh, for instance, the, the book gives a good example of gold and the gold lease, that if you were going to borrow gold, uh, you can borrow gold, but there is an interest rate on borrowing gold. That's called the gold lease rate. Uh, so the holder of gold that's lending it out is actually earning some income while it's sitting in the vault. So it's the sum of the storage costs minus the sum of the income. For most assets, for most physical commodities, they don't really produce income. Gold is silver. Those are exceptions. The precious metals do. They're called investment assets. They do. But for the vast majority of the commodities that you'll be looking at, they don't really produce income, so it's fair to say that the storage costs will be greater than the income. So there'll be a cost associated with that. So we'll let you be the sum of the storage costs minus the sum of the income discounted backwards in time. Notice the negative RT, discounted back to today. So in other words, it's the net present value of net cost. Remember when I said the income here, the I, uh, in this formula, is the net present value of all future income. Well, this U is just the net present value of all the storage costs minus the net present value of all the income. And since uh, storage costs will outweigh income in most of the cases, if we're subtracting income for known income, we must add costs for costs. Income lowers our futures price because it'll, it'll be deducted from the spot price, but the uh, storage costs, we have to pay. We have to pay for the spot asset and we have to pay for the storage costs. So that's a full cost altogether carried at the risk-free interest rate for the period of time. You will tend to push up the futures price. So let's, uh, let's have an example of what this looks like now that we sort of understand where storage costs come in. Let's say that uh, we have uh, uh, we observe an asset with a spot price of 450. We're looking at a one-year time frame, and we're told that storage is going to cost us uh, two dollars per unit. So the spot is 450 per unit, and it's going to cost us two dollars to store it for the full year. And our risk-free rate that we observe is seven uh, percent per annum. 
So we'll calculate the uh, uh, the futures price with this using what we what we have up here. F not equals the spot price plus the net present value. It, it helps when you write out the formula to keep saying every variable. It it imprints it on your mind. The net present value of the storage cost less income carried at the risk-free interest rate for that period of time. And let's just substitute in. We have 450 plus 2. Now remember now, this is the cost, right? We need the net present value. Always remember that you have to discount this separately. Or you have to do a separate calculation, then stick it in. That's why I like to explicitly put the term inside. I like to actually see it so there's nothing being smuggled in behind a variable. I can actually see it. But anyways, there it is, and then e to the rt. If we expand that out, we'll get 450 in here, plus 1.865 e to the 0 0.07. Now, what does this 1.865 tell us? It tells us that today we would need 1.865 so that in a year when we pay our storage costs of two dollars this 186.5 grows to two dollars at seven percent at the end of the year to pay the two dollars so if we were setting up an arbitrage argument for this we would need to borrow the 450 for the spot plus we would need to borrow a certain amount of money to pay for the carry uh to i keep using the word carry to pay for the storage cost that's part of the cost of carry by the way to pay for the storage cost for the year so that's what we can interpret that to mean so the futures price today, given the spot price and the cost of storage, is 484.63. So our arbitrage arguments uh, run along this line that if the futures price is greater than 484.63, we don't have to draw the whole thing out now. We know what we're doing. What do we want to do? We want to buy low and sell high. So since the futures price is greater then the 484.63 we would start by selling the high side which is we would sell uh, a futures at f naught and we would buy uh, uh, at spot and store it for the year so we would have to borrow 451.865 uh, to to get there it'll grow to 484.63 but we've locked in a higher price if on the other hand f naught is less then 484.63. Remember, we're buying low and selling high. Well, this is the low side. So now we're going to be long a futures contract at F0. And we're going to sell uh, the underlying asset at S0. Uh, and this assumes that we're the current owner of the, of the asset. Otherwise, we would have to arrange to borrow it, which might introduce a loan cost on the physical commodity itself. Uh, so... Uh, it assumes that we're the current owner and we would sell at S0. So if we sell, we'll get the 450 plus we'll save the storage costs. We're prepared to pay it if we're the owner, we'll save it. So this formula still holds uh, uh, for both sides of this arbitrage argument. So if storage costs, on the other hand, we've expressed storage costs here as a, a, a flat fee. Storage costs don't necessarily need to be a flat fee. If storage costs are not a flat fee, then our formula over here would change to F0 equals S0 E to the um, R plus U T. Notice what we've done here. For a known income, it goes inside our brackets and a known cost. For a known yield, Remember, it would be R plus whatever the yield is, uh, or R minus the yield uh, at the top, R minus Q. If we had a known yield, let me write that down up here so that uh, you remember it. F naught equals S naught E R minus Q T. This was for a known yield. Well, all we're doing is assuming that our costs are greater than our income, so the, the cost to carry the percentage will be greater than any income that we get. So instead of a negative, we have a positive. We're adding the cost. So that, that the futures price, because of this term, will end up being higher than it normally would because we're assuming that it's going to cost us more to carry it because of storage costs. So if the uh, storage costs are not expressed as, a, as just a known cost, but a known yield or a known percentage 
of the spot price. Um, this is you'd use this formula, which is just a, a, a manipulation of the known yield.